Today, I'm going to give a review of the Crawl Panel, an innovative ESP32 terminal that redefines the possibilities of DIY electronics projects. When this board arrived, I couldn't tell what was special about it just by looking at it. But as I played around with it, I gradually came to appreciate its qualities. In today's video, we will explore the features and capabilities of this impressive device and see how it stacks up against the similar ESP32 dev boards. At the heart of the crawl panel is a powerful ESP32 S3 microcontroller, recognized for its versatility and performance among the series of ESP32 controllers. The crawl panel harnesses the full potential of the ESP32 S3 to deliver unparalleled performance and reliability, empowering you to bring your innovative ideas to life. First, let's take a look at the display. What sets the Crow Panel apart is its integration with a 3.5 inch parallel 480 by 320 TFT competitive touch RGB display driven by the ILI9488 chip with a 16-bit parallel line. It offers great real estate for displaying rich graphical content and facilitating intuitive touch-based interaction. This feature sets it apart from other ESP32 dev boards, which often rely on smaller or less advanced displays. For those who want to create a cool user interface, it's very convenient as you don't have to go through the effort of wiring up your display with your microcontroller yourself. And you can also use the LVGL library to build professional looking GUI quickly. I will go into more detail about this later. I also found out after it arrived that there is another SPI version available. So what I have is the RGB version, which seems to be faster. Here is the official comparison video. Please take a look if you are interested. Now let's look at what interfaces it has. Crawl Panel is equipped with a popular USB Type-C connector for uploading programs as we often do with other ESP32 boards. It also offers an onboard charging circuit supporting charging via the USB Type-C connector. The connector for the LiPo battery is a PH2.0 type. Crawl Panel is equipped with four Quartel interfaces, also known as HY2.0 4P connectors, allowing plug and play with various Quartel sensors. These are the same form factor as the Grove connectors. You can also connect and use modules using Grove connectors. However, you need to check if the pin assignments match. The I2C modules I have worked fine and can be used as is. Please try it at your own risk. As for how we program other ESP32 boards, there are several programming methods or tools available such as Arduino RDE, Espressif IDF, Platform IO. Also, if you prefer, you can program with MicroPython. You can program using whatever method you want. For this video, I mainly use Arduino IDE. In the following, I will prepare and run programs using the Arduino IDE and talk about the process and results. As with any dev board, it will be a necessary step to refer to the manufacturer's documentation to understand the internal wiring, to confirm which pins each connector uses and how to operate the onboard sensors and display. Alacrow provides detailed descriptions and tutorials for this board. Please refer to these first. There are also sample codes available, so I recommend starting by running the sample codes. 
as we dive deeper into our review, I will explore some main features in more detail and demonstrate the crawl panel's capabilities through a series of demos. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what the crawl panel has to offer. The very first thing I want to do is to get LVGL running. LVGL is a library to help you build nice graphical user interfaces for microcontrollers. Here I will briefly introduce what I tried. First, download all the necessary files from the wiki site mentioned above. It includes the libraries needed to run the demo code. You need to place downloaded library files into the Arduino libraries folder manually, especially the LVGL library. After all these steps are done, I can compile and upload the program. It looks like this. After I have confirmed the process is working, the next goal is to control other modules by clicking buttons on the screen. We will do this later. Before that, let's try some simple sample codes. First, here is a simple program and it is included in the download files. Here are the results of running it. It is the onboard buzzer making some noise. Since we have all kinds of ports, I'd like to connect and try controlling other modules from the crawl panel. Let's start by connecting some components to the analog port and see what I can do with them. For the program, I use the A-ADC program found in the download files. It will show the value read from the analog port. The potentiometer module works like this. When turning the knob, the value will change accordingly, just to work as expected. Next, the light sensor works like this. When the light sensor is covered by hand, it gets darker around the sensor. Then the value will decrease, and vice versa. Next, the sound sensor. By touching the microphone on the sensor module, we can see the value change on the display. Next, I will try the digital port. The program running in crawl panel will send signals 0 and 1 intermittently. First, I will connect a relay module. As you can see, the relay starts to open and close according to the value change of the digital pin. After that, I connected it to a buzzer module. The buzzer will make a noise when the value is 1 and the buzzer will turn silent when the value is 0. Next is a little exciting part. As I mentioned minutes ago, there is also an I2C port, which makes it possible to connect almost all I2C modules available on the market. For this video, let me show you my self-made I2C module. Well, as you can see, at its core, it is an Arduino board with some fun parts. It was one of my old projects to test DF player. I made some modifications to it by adding an I2C connector and removing the unnecessary audio amplifier circuit that was previously included. First, let me show you how to control an LED from the crawl panel by touching the button in the graphical user interface. It is a simple demo, but you get the idea that we can make the crawl panel into a sophisticated touch controller. As you noticed, I created a simple UI with a button that I can click to trigger an action I need to execute. Let's see the part of the program doing this. We need to prepare a callback function. When the button click event is fired, then this callback function will be called. Here in my callback function, it is just sending some data to I2C receiver. It is pretty simple. Also, you need a program to decide what to do when certain data is received at the receiver site. 
My receiver program is to blink the LED when one is received. And you can adjust this part to fit your needs. Next, let me show you how to control the DF player to start and stop playing the music. As you may have noticed, besides the DF player and LED, on my board it also has an OLED display and an RGB LED. In theory, with appropriate programming, it is possible to control these components from the crawl panel like the demos I showed you. However, due to time constraints, I will skip that part. Last but not least, there is also a port for UART communication. Due to the time constraint, I will skip the demo on this board too. The concept is similar, and I am sure you know how to use it when the sender and receiver program is properly prepared. If you want to have one for your next project, you can find more detailed information on the product page. I will add a link in the description section. You can buy one from the Alcrawl official store or any other EC site you like. Search Crawl Panel ESP32 Terminal and I'm sure you can find it. In this video, I shared some thoughts about the Crawl Panel. It is equipped with ESP32 S3 and a snappy touch panel display. Its notable features include the touch panel and the ability to quickly build GUIs with the help of open source LVGL library. I also showed you some demos of how Crawl Panel can expand its functionalities by using its ports. With wide selection of external modules, it seems versatile and suitable for various scenarios. Additionally, considering its reasonable price, it looks accessible to most electronics hobbyists. What do you think? Would you like to get one and give it a try yourself? Let me know your thoughts and leave your comments in the comment section. I guess that's all for today's review. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give that thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.